Welcome to MarcusG.TV. I'm Chef Marcus Julian. I'm a chef on a mission. Today's mission is milk, milk consumption, dairy consumption. So we're all taught in school, in grade school, all throughout school, through our high school education, that milk is so important for you for bone health, that you need it for protein, that you need it for vitamin D, that you need milk, that milk is an important part of your diet. And I discovered years ago that it's just not. It's just totally BS. Uh, can you have a healthy diet with including milk in it? I'm not saying you can't. But to say that you have to consume a dairy product to have a healthy diet, I believe is totally absurd. And I heard people talking about this when I was in high school, and it made so much sense. And the first person I ever heard say this was Howard Stern, believe it or not, listening to his radio as a teenager to his show. I, he said that milk is a scam and this and that. And so I did my own research and did more research and started reading books and started watching, reading articles. And now that we have the internet, watching YouTube and stuff like that on the dangers of milk. So here's an article that I picked up from healthywildandfree.com. This person sums it up very well here. Uh, six things about, uh, six reasons you need, you need to stop drinking dairy, dairy milk, not nut milk, dairy milk. So don't get confused and thinking it's soy milk or rice milk or almond milk or hazelnut milk. We're talking about the stuff that comes out of cows. Number one, bone health. Believe it or not, the promoted bone building milk is actually harmful to your bone structure. The milk actually has a calcium leaching effect, which I've heard over and over through numerous readings. Uh, there's too much protein in it and it actually leaches the calcium out of your bones. There's a good amount of calcium in milk, but because of the pasteurization process, only a small percentage of the calcium is actually absorbed. Furthermore, milk acidifies the body so that the calcium in the milk is used to neutralize the acids to digest the milk absorbed. The calcium is neutralized and the bones suffer because calcium from the bones is actually used. Believe it or not, statistics show that countries with the lowest consumption of dairy products also have the lowest fracture incident in their population. John Robinson, in his book, Diet for New America, uh, Food Revolution. Food Revolution books scales everything out. The biggest milk consumption countries have the highest uh, osteoporosis. It's just the, the, he correlates this with 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 the milk consumption. Um, so yeah, that's a really good read. Uh, John Robbins, uh, any of his books, any of John Robbins books are great. Number two, gut health. Milk is milk used to be full of healthy gut bacteria. Milk used to be full of healthy gut bacteria that would be helpful. Now it's pasteurized and the heating process kills the beneficial bacteria that your gut needs to stay healthy. It's void of healthy gut bacteria and it also contains certain proteins that make dif milk difficult to digest. That's why studies show that people who drink milk gain more weight than those who do not. So milk is being pasteurized, homogenized, it's being altered, it's not in its natural form. Um, imagine a baby, imagine a baby that's breastfeeding from a mother, taking that milk and all of a sudden restructuring the molecules on it and heating it up and act wanting to kill everything that's in it. Well, that's what's happening. So people are going to say, well, you need to pasteurize milk because if not, you'll get sick. Why in the world are we drinking something? Why is something being promoted that you get sick in its natural form? This is crazy. When you think about the whole process of what milk is and where it comes from, dairy milk, it's just like, really? We're taking the excretion out of a cow to put in our bodies and we think that's healthy. So marketing has a huge massive role in this because they've marketed us and sold us on this. And the government's in, the, in with the dairy industry on this. The government is totally in with the dairy industry on this. It's not like it's just, it's not like it's not like the dairy industry is out there, you know, just saying the dairy is dairy industry is out there saying whatever they want. But the government's backing them up, and with the surplus milk and how the government supports and our taxpayers go for the surplus milk, and they're supporting dairy farms that we don't need when we can be using valuable farmland for other crops, especially especially plants that have much more calcium, absorbable calcium. It's just it's just crazy to think that the government is totally backing milk based upon milk's contributions and ends with the government. Antibiotics and hormones, number three. Cows are pumped with antibiotics to prevent disease and they're also given growth hormones to be bigger and produce more milk. The problem is that these hormones and antibiotics are also found in the milk produced by cows. Okay, so the cows are given to the cows and it goes in the milk. 
These antibiotics disrupt your gut health and even further weaken your immunity. So you are what you eat, same concept with the cow, they are what they eat. Now some of you are gonna say, well I only have milk that's no antibiotics, no hormones, this and that. There's still natural hormones in milk. Okay, don't think that cow is hormone free. That cow has tons of natural hormones that you don't need. Number four, allergies. According to USA Today, approximately 60% of adults cannot digest milk. About 75% of the population is lactose intolerant. So we're just not designed to consume the stuff to begin with from a cow. We're designed to consume the stuff from our mothers when we're first born so we can double our body weight and that's why milk has a specific amount of protein it has. We've crossed the species barrier, okay? When you think about crossing the species barrier, it's a pretty disgusting thing. Why aren't we drinking rat milk? Rat milk has 63% protein. We can get real big muscles with rat, rat milk, right? It's 63% protein. And there are other milks out there that have much more protein than cow's milk. The, the correlation of protein in whatever mammal's milk it is, is directly related to when it doubles its birth weight. So a human takes six months to double its birth weight, we have a 4% milk protein. A cow doubles its birth weight in three months, it has an 11%. So the, hot, the quicker the doubling of the birth weight, the more protein is in the mother's milk. Mother Nature's figured this out. It's all formulated for us already. We don't need to try to trick Mother Nature and and assume that um, that we're outsmarting her by drinking other species of milk. It's already done. And there's a reason why a cow doesn't drink milk after it's weaned. There's a reason why ma all mammals don't drink their mother's milk because they're weaned at a certain point and they don't need it anymore in their life because whatever they need, they're getting in their diet to begin with. Number five, skin conditions. In several studies, children who drank cow's milk had more acne than those who didn't because milk is a toxic byproduct of sick, medicated, hormone-injected cows, and the nutritional value is very, very low. Then after this horrible treatment of cows and their diminishing health, we take that milk, pasteurize the rest of the nutritional value out of it. Skin conditions such as acne, psoriasis, dry, flaky skin, or rashes could be caused by milk consumption. So that's number five. Number six, cancer. Hormones in milk such as IGF, insulin growth factor, may increase the risk of prostate, colon, and breast cancer. I've read this for years, IGF, it's a naturally occurring thing in milk. That is not the hormones they're injecting it, that's the actual hormone in the cow to begin with. Insulin growth factor. Um, it, it's been linked to cancer. I've read study after study, I've read story after story, article after article, how there's a correlation between cancer and IGF, which is in the milk. You're not gonna get that out of the milk. That's just part of it. So, my son plays, my kids play a lot of sports, especially my son. We're always in other schools, and every single school we go to in the wintertime when he plays basketball, there's a big milk poster actually in the, in the gymnasium. Big milk posters. So, you know, we think because school's teaching us that it's correct, all that's coming from is from, from sponsored industry propaganda, sponsored industry science. The milk industry produces so-called science that says our product has this, this, and this. Now, these They're not gonna say stuff that's bad about their product. They're there to sell their product. So they're gonna take any small loophole they can. For example, if tobacco had vitamin C in it, you'd bet that the cigarette manufacturers would be like, oh, get your vitamin C through cigarettes. They find one small thing that their product has and overlook everything else and then market that and go after that. And then they pay for studies that basically blow that up and say, okay, well, this is really why our product is so good. This is why you have to consume it and go on and on and on. And then all of a sudden we're just brainwashed through society from a very young age that milk makes strong bones. Now you haven't seen those milk with strong bones ads in a while. That's because they got sued and they lost the lawsuit because it's been disproven. Milk does not make strong bones. So you don't really see new ads with those milk makes strong bones milk does the bones good or whatever those are, there's new ads not out there if you see an old poster it's because it's an old poster it's not something that's new it was just created so if you're concerned about calcium you're concerned about the stuff in milk like vitamin d go get some sun take a vitamin d supplement the government says like 600 to 800 i use which is totally low uh many holistic doctors nutritionists uh, people that are into nutrition say 500 I use to 5,000 to 8,000 instead of four to 600 uh, because the bottom line is 
there's a lot, there are certain healthy things that may be in milk, like vitamin D, like calcium, but the delivery mechanism is wrong. Just like putting vitamin C in cigarettes would be a wrong delivery mechanism of vitamin C. So, or if they put some kind of miracle drug in a cigarette to cure cancer, you wouldn't want to consume something that's going to cause cancer to get something that could cure cancer. So it's that whole scenario. I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano. Thanks for watching. If you like my videos, please hit like, subscribe to my channel, and definitely pass it on. And in the comments, share some of your favorite types of plant-based milks. Is it hazelnut milk, almond milk? I like hemp milk. Hemp and flax milk are really cool.